All right, guys, what we're looking to do is graph an, a reciprocal trig function. Notice this is the cosecant. So the, the very first thing I like to do when I recognize that it's a, a reciprocal trig function is just let myself know I'm going to use a guide function, right? So I'm going to use this function's reciprocal as a guide, and I'm going to call that g of x for guide function. That would just be 2 times the sine of, and I keep everything else the same, right? So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the reciprocal function, since sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. Now, all the other stuff that, that you did previously um, in terms of amplitude and period and phase shift and vertical shift, that's all going to be very similar. So all this stuff that I'm listing, the, this refers to the guide function. The amplitude is 2, right? That means it's going to go up to and down to from the center line. The vertical shift, um, which defines our center line, so our vertical shift is up 1. That means the center line is at y equals 1, right? Next, I, I've got my, my period and my phase shift. The period is determined by the original and the coefficient of x, right? And then the phase shift is determined by both the coefficient of x and anything being added or subtracted. So what I'm going to list first is uh, is the period of this function. So I'm going to go with, um, I'll use my black pen uh, and say that the period is 2 pi times and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this coefficient. Same thing as dividing. And I know it's in yellow, so it's like nearly impossible to read. Um, that's 3 halves. So I'll actually rewrite it in, um, in black. And then just I'll put a, a box around it in yellow so you can see it. Right. So that's just the reciprocal of 2 thirds. If, if I do that, if I simplify that, the period 2 pi times 3 over 2 is actually... 3 pi, right? So that means it's going to take 3 pi units to, to draw out this entire guide function. Uh, and then the last thing that we're going to look at is the, um, the phase shift. Phase shift. And of course, that's the horizontal transformation, right? It's actually a translation. And maybe remember that you're going to use your your number being added or subtracted, and divide that by the coefficient of x, right? So what we actually have is pi, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal again, pi times three halves, right? So th that's what this piece is right here. Um, so our phase shift is actually, let's see, it was minus, so it's three, pi over 2 to the right. Okay, so we have enough written here to actually sketch out a guide function. Um, so what I'm going to start with, I'm going to give myself my x and y axis. Since it's shifted to the right, I have an idea where that stuff's going to be. It's also shifted up one. So uh, again, it's a sketch, right? So it's not going to be perfect. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna make it a little bit longer this way than it is to the left because I know I don't need anything to the left of the y-axis. Here's y, here's x. And let's see, the period is three pi long, right? Or three pi wide. It takes that long to do a full cycle of the function. And three pi over two is actually 1.5 pi, right? So let's see. I would need 6 pi over 2 plus that, 9 pi, well, that's a big section here. So I'm going to try to, to make this um, pretty to scale, but it, it's not going to be perfect. So if that's 1 and a half, 1 and a half, 1 and a half, that's decent. I'm going to put it right about there. There's, there's my 3 pi, 4 pi over, okay, so this is um, 3 pi over 2. And that's going to be where this thing kind of starts. Here's my guides. 
And at one, that's my vertical transformation, right? And my amplitude was two. So we go two to three, down to zero, and down to negative one. So there we go. Well, notice these are dotted, they're not asymptotes or anything yet. It's just to help me graph this function. So if this whole space, the whole period, from start to finish is three pi, three pi over two plus three pi is nine pi over two. Three plus nine is 12, divided by two is six. So I'm gonna go with six pi over two and you probably probably remember that I don't like to reduce just in case. It's a lot easier to find averages when I don't. Three and six is nine divided by two, not so nice. So we're gonna go with nine pi over four. And then six, and that's 15. So our halfway there is 15 pi over four. So we've got this spot that's gonna graph our, enti our entire guide function. We know the sign starts in the center line hits the center line in the middle and ends at the center line. So I'm gonna draw a dotted, this is my guide function. Again, I'm dotting it because it's a guide. It's not the actual function I'm supposed to be graphing. This is g of x and I'm using the green color so you can see that, right? Here's our guide function. This is all the transformations of our guide function. And now if we're gonna actually graph our function, we're gonna try to graph, um, Let's see, uh, two cosecant, two thirds x minus pi plus one. If we're gonna try to graph that thing, right? We're gonna try to graph that thing. Um, the, the big push here is that anytime the sign is zero, the reciprocal of that is undefined. So I'm actually gonna put vertical asymptotes, right? Vertical asymptotes right there. Because if sine is zero, again, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. You're taking zero and forcing it into the denominator, which we all know is an undefined value. The other thing to recognize, if we're at the maximum point of our, our function, think about the original sine function. The reciprocal is going to be the same, right? So if that were one, right? If that were one, the reciprocal of one is just one. Same thing down here, right? So the reciprocal puts us at the exact point. And the closer we get to zero here, remember each of these fractions is, it, it's zero in terms of center line, the closer that the, the cosecant is gonna get to infinity. So what happens is this function peels up and away toward those asymptotes and they go to infinity. These guys go to negative infinity. I used to try to think about this as almost taking the guide function and peeling it away from that center line, right? So anytime you're at, at a reciprocal function, you're going outside of the guide function, going above or below the guide function. Um, hopefully this helps. Uh, if, if it did, don't forget to like the video and please make sure you reach out if you have questions.